Hi, thank you for coming. Um, so my name is Steven Rosenberg. I work for Red Hat. And the mission statement for this uh, presentation is the goal is to predict when processes will complete in order to start the migration of other processes early in order to use the soon-to-be-freed resources sooner when there is an added value to do so, such as for performance improvement or reducing uh, cost. So when discussing uh, process migration, I am referring to the migration of virtual machines and the processes that run on them as a self-contained unit. So the topics we'll cover are load balancing, fault tolerance, scheduling, types of solutions, uh, live migration, and predictive analysis. So when you want to load balance, you can see this is like a round robin approach, uh, where VM1 will go on host 1, VM2 will go on host 2, uh, process 3 will go on host 3, and then 4 will start again on 1. Um, we want to prioritize, however, and add priority uh, based upon urgency. So we'll use uh, even distribution within categories. The categories will be urgent, high priority, neutral, low priority, no important. So what could go wrong? Well, things can go wrong. So we have fault tolerance. Uh, network elements can fail. Hardware resources can fail. And or other resources, uh, OS, BIOS, kernel failures, and process failures. So one solution is redundancy. So you can have two hosts. They're exactly the same, but one is active, one is passive. You can have multiple uh, network connections. Uh, so if one fails, the other one is still uh, viable. You have multiple storage items and a lot of different connections. And what does it equal? High cost. So the idea is to reduce the cost. Uh, so schedule uh, dispatching concepts. Uh, you have a process on a queue. The queue can be a regular queue. It could be based upon time. It could be based upon um, priority. And it can be sorted in any kind of order. And basically, the uh, idea is you want to be able to schedule uh, process eight. And so the round robin approach, even distribution, you start it on host two. And then uh, nine, process nine, will start on host three. Um, but what if host eight needs two slots? Well, then you could use smart loading uh, concepts and try to move six to two, host two so that you can fit uh, process eight into three, but then there's no space for nine. But if you know that process five is only going to go down after a certain period of time, uh, you can start the migration early by predicting and move eight to host two uh, while the other process is uh, completing. And you can move 9 to host 3, and you have a more predictive balance. So that's the concept. So scheduling, the ability to launch processes based upon needed resources. Monitor the amount of resources each process utilizes. The types of uh, launching scenarios can be, of course, initialization, as we covered, uh, migration for maintenance. Uh, the hard drive needs to be upgraded, or the operating system. You need to first migrate the processes before you bring the computer down. Uh, rebalancing migration to another host to take advantage of uh, freed resources. And fault recovery, migrating after system processes or failures. Well, hopefully, if you can predict a failure, you can migrate earlier. OK, so policy units, attributes of scheduling. We have filters. Uh, such as where a, um, you, have, you want to be able to match a process to multiple hosts. So the first thing you do is to say if the uh, process requirements uh, match the host. If, you need, uh, if it's uh, mission critical and you need a uh, high performance uh, network card, then those with weak network cards will get filtered out. Then you score and weight those uh, hosts that are left. And uh, the best score wins. But you also consider how to balance. You have even distribution, which we discussed. You have power saving, because you might want to save costs. Uh, so you control how much uh, of the power saving uh, you want. Uh, prioritization, which we covered. Affinity, where some processes can work together, so you can have positive affinity. Uh, but other processes might have to be on separate hosts, such as if they both use the same port. 
so they would have negative affinity. affinity. And pinning for optimal performance, uh, such as if a process works best for certain uh, hardware configurations, you pin them for just those hosts that have that configuration. So types of solutions. We have uh, live migration. We have redundancy. Uh, live migration is more flexible. You have load balancing. You have fault recovering. But you have to minimize the live migration pausing. And the negative part is the pausing. It takes longer. Redundancy, you have distribution of processes that are running simultaneously. You have fault recovery. The pausing time is much less because the process is still running, but the cost is high. So live migration, how does it work? Well, you have a source host that the process is running on, and you have a destination host, a destination host. And uh, the first thing you have to do is to set up the network connectivity. The IP addresses, everything has to work the same on the destination host, look the same as it did on the source. Uh, remote disk availability needs to be the same. Uh, migrating the local disk data, it has to go from the source to the destination. And then copying the memory states, we do it in phases. Because we still want to keep running the process on the source until we're ready to move it on the destination to reduce the pause time. So we first move all of the memory contents while the process is running. And then we send the current differences that the process is still making because it's still running. And then when we find the minimum difference, only then do we pause the process, we copy the rest of the data, we copy the CPU state, and then we bring up the process on the destination host because the goal is to limit the pause of the process. Then we clean up the source. So this is a, uh, shows the transitions. We first set up or synchronize the disk while the process is still running on the, the source. We start the memory transfer. We calculate the estimate downtime. We continue memory transfer in deltas. And then we pause the process. And then we activate the network, complete memory transfer, we run the process on the host so that then we can clean up the source. So for copying over the actual uh, local disk data, uh, you can see here that the, um, the guest moved from host one to host two. So he can still access the data that's still on the storage on host one through control of VMs. And we'll basically pass the data from the local storage on host one to the host storage on two, while the VM has already been migrating, because if we waited till all the data was passed, it would take too long. Once all the data is copied over, then we're OK. He can then access the data locally. So now we'll talk about predictive analysis. So predicting future occurrences via analysis of past performance is the concept. So we'll talk about techniques for predictive analysis, process for developing a prediction model, types of prediction models with examples, and then applying the concept to scheduling. So predictive analytics methodologies, we start at the top, we have historical data. We go to the left. The first thing we do is create a training set from historical data. So we do some pre-processing, we normalize the data, we order the data, and then we pass it to an algorithm that will look for the patterns in the uh, data and match the patterns, such as a neural network would. He would adjust his uh, weights uh, accordingly. And then he would create a model. Then he would go on, go on the right side. You create the testing data. You'd feed that into the model. He would give you the results. You compare the results to the expected results. You calculate the percentage of error. And then you see if it's good enough. And usually, you have to do that process many times until it learns, such as when we fall down, we learn from it, we get up, and after a while, just like humans, uh, the uh, concept is the same. So there are many techniques for developing the algorithm. Uh, the idea is to not be a solution looking for a problem. You should define the problem first, and then look for the solution that fits the problem. So processes for developing a prediction model. So again, we start from the top. We define the project, we collect the data, 
we analyze the data, we validate the data, we create a model, as we showed, we deploy it, we monitor it, we see where we are, we redefine the project, and we do it over and over again until we get it uh, improvement, improvement after improvement, and until we get it right. So the types of predictive models and examples uh, support the vector machine model. It's a classification model to predict the category. So examples are stock price increases or decreases. Uh, for predicting quantity, we can use regression. Examples are predicting a person's age based upon height, weight, health, and other factors. Uh, detecting anomalies. It's uh, normal behavior classifications versus exceptions, such as money withdrawal anomalies. If uh, too much money is coming out of a bank account too soon, that's a red flag. It's something you want to know about. Uh, clustering, uh, discover structure in unexplored data or unstructured data. Finding groups of customers with similar behavior, given large database of customers containing their demographics and past buying records. That would be good for marketing specialists who are looking for marketing segments. So applying predictive and an analytics to scheduling. The criteria for the data can be processing time or iterations. You can adjust for the number of iterations of, based upon the amount of uh, data that it needs to process. And then you can also adjust for resource capacity and priority. Uh, the percentage of resources used adjusted for capacity and priority, and adjustments for anomalies when calculating averages, and I can talk about that as well. So some ideas, we can take selective uh, techniques applied for other scheduling applications, such as combining regression-like modeling and functional approximation using the sum of exponential functions to produce probability estimates, and that would be combining statistical with mathematical uh, techniques. Others, such as machine learning and advanced mathematical models, that would be using more AI combined with mathematical models. So this is the um, uh, proposal. You have a predictive an analysis architecture. You have schedulers. As we said, you have various parameters to consider, the CPU, memory, storage, networking, and the scoring. And of course, you have an example for distribution. What's new? You have a historian. The historian collects the data. He collects the metrics. It could be from logging. It could be from other places the scheduler uh, prov can provide. Um, the predictor then reads that historian. It does its predictions. And then it passes uh, suggestions to the scheduler, such as, hey, this process is going to go down soon. And another process needs the resources, let's migrate. So tracking historical data, the time each process starts and terminates, the resources used by each process, the time each process uses to migrate, the time or iterations that memory or disk transfer occurs per size. So these are the considerations based upon analysis. If early migration can proceed, when early migration shall start, Error correction, anomaly detection for accurate results. So anomaly error calculations and methods for consideration in order to uh, narrow down the, uh, the results and get more accurate results. You can use statistical uh, techniques calculating the percentage of error from the mean and eliminate results outside of the threshold. You could use, be fancy and try to use signal processing techniques, smoothing, filtering to eliminate the glitches. You could try to use machine learning techniques to analyze the patterns and categorize between normal and out-of-range behaviors. But again, the solution should fit the problem. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> I'm flattered. <laughs> thank you. Any questions or comments? Or... Thank you. Okay. Yes. What version of what? I didn't hear. I yeah. Well, it's not. This is a um, this is a proposal. It's not implemented. There are pieces. 
the whole idea was to give a presentation that would show what we have and what can be done. I did good on the time, I guess. You know, it's maybe too good. Yeah. You did quite good. Okay, uh, very good. Just to repeat the question. I was wondering how you get this idea of the local implementation or Yes, well, um, you have my email address. Anyone who's interested in this, uh, they can contact me. We could, you know, do something, move it forward within Red Hat, uh, within a community. Uh, people who are interested want to get involved. But we re I'd really appreciate to get the feedback and uh, to see, uh, you know, what the... Uh, enthusiasm level is, and we can really do something with this. Uh, it's, uh, it's an innovative idea. I think, uh, I predict that it'll be a future uh, implementation that'll need to be done. Because you need to close the gap between the live migration, which is more flexible, and the redundancy, which is too expensive. And it's all about reducing the cost for the customer. That's what he cares about. 